you see some lemon seeds that we did last video? Here's our apple seeds and our pear seeds. So we're gonna have to put some the apple seeds into the refrigerator. The pear too. And, and what does putting it in the refrigerator do? Get it out from its hibernation. Okay. So how are we going to do that? We're gonna put them in bags with the paper towels. First we're gonna wet the paper towels. Okay. Nice, coolish, warm water. And we wring the water out, right? Not all of it, just most of it. Okay. So what do we do then? Then we put the pear seeds in. Okay. We put the pear seeds in and we what? And then we wrap it up. My mom is going to do the wrapping. Oh. All you do is you just fold it in half. Fold it in half. Fold it in half. Fold it in half. This way you can kind of watch them through the top layer. And then you put them in a Ziploc baggie. Ba doom, ba doom. And because the, you squeeze all the air out so it doesn't get moldy, and because apples and pears have to go through a winter freeze before they will say, hey, you know, it's time to grow, if you put them in the refrigerator, it stays cool, but it's also warm enough that they are able to start germinating. So we leave them in the fridge until they germinate. So what are you craving today? I don't know. I'm craving pizza. All right, we're going back. We're still recording. You left it on record, Ember. Well, anyways, the lemon seeds we're going to put up on the refrigerator so that they could germinate in the heat. And then the pear and the apple are going to go into the refrigerator. Seeds don't need light to germinate. They need moisture. Some seeds need to be a little cooler. Some seeds need to be a little warmer. Most seeds prefer to be warm in order to germinate. Thus, putting them on top of the refrigerator or in the refrigerator away from the light will help them to germinate faster. Now, we're going to go on to an update. So here we have... Wait. This is Ember's apricot pit that she grew from the seed that I showed you how to get out of the shell. So that's what it's looking right now. You can kind of tell that the dirt got a little bit on it, but that's okay. So the um, the, the dirt is moist and we have food for the plant in here. And you gotta keep it by the window. Trees typically like a lot of light, especially fruit trees. So the closer to the window you put them, the more likely they are to do well. This is kind of bent because I forgot to turn it, so it's been growing to the light. So when I put it back, I'm going to put this side to the window so it straightens itself out. But when this gets bigger, maybe next year, we're going to plant this outside. So here you see a dragon fruit cactus. Its prickles are still pretty soft, but as it grows bigger, you're, you will be able to hurt yourself, cut yourself, or even um, bleed by accident. So this, these need a lot of light, not so much water. And so I got this from a dragon fruit, which has a lemony, sour, that sweetish taste. Kind of tastes like a pear and a lemon. So I took the seeds out and I put them in here. As you can tell... No, no, no. You put them in a paper towel. You put them in a paper towel. Until they germinated, and then you put them in here. So you can see an air root right here. My mom's going to tell you about that. So this is a vine, even though it's a cactus. So it'll set out ear roots, and anywhere that it touches soil, it'll grow more roots. They're very easy to root, and... They're not that fast growing, however. This one we've had maybe a year now. I think we did this last year. 
and this is as big as it's gotten. It's basically in the same size pot as the apricot uh, tree that we sprouted a week ago. However, what I could do is I could cut off some of this growth and stick it in the soil and get more to grow. But I kind of want to see what it's going to do first. As you can tell, this pot is a little bit bigger than this because this gets bigger. Well, they both get, actually, this will get bigger than this, but this is older. So, that is our update on the apricot tree and a little explanation about the dragon fruit that we have growing. Now, so, we're bringing back our nectarine and our pomegranate with some of our other seeds. And we're going to check on them to see how they do. We started to germinate these on the 9th, so about a week ago. And we're going to simply just take it out and unfold it and see if it's germinated yet. And if it doesn't? Then oh, we well. just fold it back up and put it back in and wait a little bit longer. It looks Don't like they're it. starting to rot. Mm. Doesn't look like they took all that well. And yeah, it does look like there's a little bit of rot coming around them. So we will call that a fail and then it, prob it probably happened because I let the fruit ripen too much. So we will just ditch these and wind up getting another pomegranate and trying again. You don't always have a success. If try, try, and try again. Why do you think that saying was made? Yeah, just like my mango pit started to open, started to set root, and then all of a sudden it stopped doing anything. But it's not mushy, so it's still alive. Now on the same day that we did the pomegranate, we did this nectarine. Nectarine had split open on its own. Be careful. I see green, so that could be a good thing. Maybe even a bad. You don't know, Mommy. And... Nothing. Split. We have a split. It split open. If you guys don't see, there's a split right around there. Recording your fingers. So, I've never grown it before, but it looks like it split open and died. That's what an inside of a seed looks like. For an apricot, and you're recording your fingers. And I guess we're going to call that a failure, too. Throw this up. Anyways, these little wrinkly seeds up here are typically what nectarine seeds look like. And those are more apricot pits. So we're going to germinate those two and see what they do. When you buy When you buy fruit at the store, a lot of the times it's a hybrid of different kinds of the same fruit. They want to get something that's going to last long, something that's going to grow fast, and in the process, they make it so that the fruit seeds will not germinate. Not all of the time does that happen. So, when you're germinating fruit from grocery store produce, it's always hit and miss. The germination rate is low, except for certain items. Things like tomatoes, they're almost always going to sprout. Celery. <laughs> celery, you can buy a heart of celery, chop the bottom off where the roots are, stick it in water, and they'll start growing roots. And you plant that. Same thing with garlic. And a lot of the times, the people who make the produce, they will spray it with stuff so that it doesn't grow like potatoes. That doesn't mean that you can't grow it, it just means that it's going to be harder to grow it. So in our next video, I'm probably going to start recording it tomorrow because these are nice and ripe. These are golden kiwis. I'm going to try and do the same thing and see if I could get these to grow. 
Okay, so we're gonna cut them open. Instead of being green, they're yellow, but they still have seeds. Now, I wanna bring you up to a more serious matter. When you buy potting soil from the grocery store or from the garden center or wherever you get it, no matter what the brand, you're always running a risk of bringing home insects that will eat your plants. I keep a lot of organic matter in my soil because I have predatory mites. They eat things like spider mites and fungus gnats and the larvae to these white flies. Now, no matter the brand of soil that you get from the grocery store, you always run the risk of bringing home something that's going to eat your plants. And if your plants are inside, you don't have many natural predators for these garden pests. That's why I invested into the predatory mites. They killed off the spider mites that I had almost instantaneously. However, when I bought some potting mix for my vanilla orchid, it came with these itty bitty white flies. And if you're like me and you don't like to spray pesticides on your plants, predatory mites and fly tape and patience is your best way to go. In a matter of a week or two, they've decimated most of the house plants that I own. They ate my herbs, my Camellia sensus, my Lily of the Valley, four of my begonias, a dragon tree, my aloe vera, my parade roses, my daughter's cactus, which I keep telling her to leave in its little hydro pot, my jade, two of my purple passion plants, and one of my succulents, which I'm not sure other than it's a succulent as to what it is. What white flies do is they fly close to the soil and they walk around the soil and they lay their eggs in the soil. And their larvae that hatches out of the eggs, well, they eat the roots to your plants. These guys are currently attacking my tangerine tree. So I've been in communication with the company that I bought the potting soil from. And they've already offered me a refund for my potting soil. And we're going back and forth to see if they're going to replace the plants that the white flies from their soil gave me. So, it's important to know how to grow your own food. So, if you're at a farm and you don't have any, like, these groceries or something, you can learn how to grow celery, tomatoes, dragon fruit, peaches, pears, watermelon. I believe we're going to do a video on that once the seeds come in. And if, if you guys don't know how to cook your own food, I only know how to cook eggs. So, if you guys don't know how to cook your own food, you should learn by watching my mom's videos. Sometimes she does them without me, like the soup video. And then she's gonna do some with me. If you like this video, subscribe. Don't forget to help these buddies by planting your own.